You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 20th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from just outside the Hugo Chavez communist-funded Hunter Biden laptop proves Democratic Party added votes so Antifa, George Soros, and AOC can kill Grandma, Trump won press conference. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. They don't call me one take drift class for nothing because it's not true, actually. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go lay down now so you can just do the rest. <laughs> I'll just do of the, the podcast day. by myself. I don't I think so. I need to oxygenate and hydrate and all those other eights uh. that you need to do during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. That well, was hey, great. everybody. This is our last podcast before Thanksgiving. We want you guys to know how grateful we are for you. Very much so. Very, very. Our podcast family. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've been talking a lot this week about the Roaring Twenties, which we, have. we feel like we're entering the Roaring Twenties, um, we, an, another Roaring Twenties. We we, uh, we have a fondness, uh, not a fondness, but a uh, weakness, I guess, or a, a special attraction to uh, movies and television shows that are set between the two world wars. Miss Pettigrew lives Ms. for Pettigrew a day. Miss Pettigrew lives for a day. Wonderful movie. Uh, Babylon Berlin. Mm-hmm. And there's a few others that are are in that middle well, time. Cabaret, Cab- yeah, cabaret, which is actually the rise of Nazis. But yeah. yeah, yeah, and it does feel like if this vaccine actually, you know, stops our pandemic in its tracks, we will have had a massive democracy threatening event, which is basically, mm-hmm. from my perspective. Um, Everything from the Bush administration through the Trump administration, Mm -hmm. Uh, the Republican Mm -hmm. Party behavior during that entire time, a long war against democracy, followed by a pandemic, which we had in the 20s as well, or in the teens as well. And then people are going to be kind of ready to party. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And my only hope is that we will not repeat the mistake of World War One, post-World War One thinking by um, letting the fascists rearm. Because mm-hmm. that's, I mean, the, you know, the the whole Treaty of Versailles and the way the Germans were treated and all that stuff, all that is, you know, historically that's there. I'm not a, I'm not going to dispute any of that. But um, once the fascists started to notice that no one was going to stop them, mm-hmm. no matter what they did, you know, they, they started forming small groups. They started forming mm-hmm. um, what they call a Tea Party, I believe, and then there was the <laughs> uh, the whole anti the the whole uh, anti anti fa people, and then yeah. there were um, uh, QAnon, I believe, was part of the uh, no, it was, no, but there was a whole run up of brown shirts and propaganda and yeah. screaming yeah. lunatics who were harvesting a pre existing racist, demented um, culture and physically hungry. I mean, yeah. this is the thing. I right. think, I think you have to look at it from the standpoint of, um, I look at it from the standpoint of Davos and the left behind people mm-hmm. and how we have hollowed out. In the United States, uh, the manufacturing sector to the yes. point where uh, people who are not uh, information technology people uh, don't have futures. And there is, I know from y- your work that there is a lot of manufacturing still in America Lovely. and mm-hmm. uh, it needs to be expanded. Mm-hmm. But uh if we had handled Germany the way we did after World War II with the Marshall Plan, right? Uh, you know, fascism would not have risen. That's true. <laughs> and, and if we had 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 infrastructure projects and not gone the Reagan route of mm-hmm. drowning government in the bathtub, but instead invested in people, we wouldn't have a, a Trump. We wouldn't have this populism, racist bullshit happening. Mm-hmm. Uh so it is about being aware of history and investing. Uh, and and that carries us right over to the Democratic Party and what we have to do in the next four years, certainly. Mm-hmm. Do you want before we before we leave all of this, I wanna I wanna say he's in the jailhouse now. I am. Everybody. I'm back in uh, Twitter pokey uh, for the <laughs> sixth time. I'm I'm a six time loser. 
Um, I, I believe at 10, I get a free hoagie from somebody. <laughs> Um, so I'll punch that card. A gravy boat. Yeah. I have gone to uh, Twitter jail six times uh, for the most ridiculously trivial reasons you can imagine. Well, and this um, is so funny because Megan Kelly this week actually said, I'm leaving New York City. And, you know, Wonkat said, for whiter pastures. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you called her white trash. I, I which... pointed out that, that Matt Taibbi, who has lost his mind. Yeah. Uh, appearing on the Megan Kelly podcast. Podcast, uh, yes. Was the white trash media singularity. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. And that, boom, you're, you're done. You're out, out of Twitter for a week. That's, you're gone for a week. That's bullying, yes. You're yeah. bu- you bullied Matt Taibbi. I know, and, and Megan Kelly. And I, 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 oh, I, I didn't know white trash was a religion. Uh, no. or a nationality, but apparently it is, and, and you can't well, do that. Well, and I used that term once on Twitter, and someone pointed out to me, and, and this is true, mm-hmm. uh, that white trash is often used as a derogatory term to mean uh, associates with black people in a way that is denigrating to black people as right. well. So You're, it's it's important to be careful with your language, which I know you always are. I, I Well, not always, but in this case... <laughs> I didn't track down the word origin. I just right, know exactly right. what I intended, and I said what I intended. And then I did what I do after I go to Twitter jail every time. Uh, I found my cell, and I said hello to my cellmate, and I started carving <laughs> a chest set out of stone and <laughs> hanging a little poster of uh, Raquel Welch on the wall. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. Know, you do that in Twitter jail. Twitter Twitter jail time is slow time, blue gal. It, yeah, and you write more when you're in Twitter jail. I do. So I got at least one note. I got at least one note saying we like you in Twitter jail because you write more stuff. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but this week it's been really hard. Um, but anyway, I what I do when I'm in Twitter jail. One of the very first things I go down to the Twitter jail library as a trustee. <laughs> Because I'm a trustee now. He's they, a trustee. He gets, I'm there all the he time. Gets the brownies oh, uncut. Class. I can bake brownies yeah. for him in jail. I, yeah. I wheel um. I wheel the cart from cell to cell, handing out copies of the National Review um, <laughs> to people who want to check out. You, the you really ought to check out uh, yeah. Bill Crystal's new article. It's oh, really great. God. You know, this <laughs> Kevin Williamson makes a whole lot of sense when he's talking <laughs> on this stuff. Uh, but what I do is I go look up um, people who I don't particularly like and have no respect for their opinion, who have blue checks, who are white people, um, who are conservatives, who've done exactly what I have just gone to Twitter jail for. With, yeah. you know, no repercussions whatsoever. And, of course, I always find them because there are no repercussions for um, blue checks uh, right. who are white guys. There just aren't, right. um, well, especially if they're that, conservatives. That, that you're, you don't need to say blue check and white guy because that yeah. is – that is they are the same thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway. And and today is the anniversary of the opening of the Nuremberg Trials. We right. just were remembering history, all these kind of history it, things. It blows against tyranny. Speaking of blows against tyranny, yes, yeah, 75 years ago today. Uh, hello, um, Stephanie Miller. I just want to shout <laughs> out. Uh, she's having real problems because her mom is, you know, very old, 98 years old, I believe, and suffers from dementia mm-hmm. and is on lockdown and she can't visit her and so on oh. and so forth. And it's incredibly sad. I mean, she's yeah. going through... I, she talked this morning about how the Rachel Maddow thing yesterday, talking about Susan, her wife, yeah. or her mm-hmm. partner, uh, was the kind of gut punch that just you know hurt her physically because she knows mm-hmm. what it's like to have someone you love desperately um, sick and, in this case, locked away from you and you can't see her. But her dad uh, was one of the judges on the Nuremberg trial. Her dad was also mm-hmm. the vice president of, of Barry Goldwater, and that didn't end well. Uh, but he was a Nuremberg judge and – also, in Blows Against Tyranny, 45 years ago this day, fascist military dictator of Spain, Generalissimo Francisco Franco, keel over dead, and he's still dead, per Chevy Chase. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe that was 45 years ago that Chevy Chase was making jokes about Generalissimo Francisco Franco still being dead. He's still dead. And, yeah. of course, you had Garrett Morris come out and give the news for deaf people, You're which right. was important. right. Right, yeah. very important. Our top story tonight. I just, <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, it was low tech and it was hilarious and we all loved it. And then it went downhill and it's been, it's been a mixed blessing ever since. But it's been ever a long since. Time. Anyway. Ever since. I read a really interesting article this week in Governing Magazine, which is a, now it's just online only uh, magazine for, uh, it's for government officials. It's for people in local government and state government and, and how do you, administer programs and how do you navigate uh tech in uh 
traffic, <laughs> traffic mm-hmm. management and so forth. I think we I need love to pause, the magazine. We mm-hmm. pause just for a moment to back up and say, yes, we're a house where we get Governing Magazine. Yeah, and we, read we, watch, it. we read Governing Magazine yeah, because it's, it's a pro-government, good government magazine. Yeah. It's a, yes, it and is. It's, and it's, techn- it's technological, but uh, it it gives a lot of good information about how does government work and how yeah. to make government work, and we're very interested in that. Um, and there was an article this week about, uh, the title of the article was, With Trump Defeated, Why Are Democrats So Downcast? Uh-huh. Uh, and you said you had a comment about that, that why Democrats and Republicans handle victories differently. Yeah, well, it's a quote from the Untouchables, David Mamet's The Untouchables, um, when they're about to raid a bridge uh, along the Canadian border. And the, the uh, head of the Mounties says, you know, as you know, surprise is half the battle. And Elliot Ness comes back with, yes, surprise is half the battle. Many things are half the battle. Losing is half the battle. Let's think about what is all the battle. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. the point. The point is, this is not over by a damn sight. This is not over during our (laughs) lifetime. This is not going to be during many lifetimes. This is not going to be over because chop wood, carry water. It's always there's Mm -hmm. always something that needs doing. And there's always people out there who are trying to undo the good work the previous generations have already done. So unless they're all raptured up to heaven, um, a whole bunch of fascists are going to 70 plus million of our citizens are going to be around gumming up the works, sabotaging everything that Joe Biden tries to do, believing that the election was stolen for another generation. So this is not over. And that's a big part of it. The other part of it is that the minute the victory is won, Mm -hmm. Democrats start to position themselves for the things they want to get done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the term circular firing squad has been used a lot this week about Democrats, which is kind of remarkable. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and I think too the Trump madness hasn't gone away, and and that has depressed a lot of people. They thought that once you won, you won. You know, right. we worked hard, we got more votes, apparently, we got more electoral votes, and we won. Apparently, and, those people slept through the Obama administration. Right. So well, you know, it, it it's hard. Uh, but but let me get to this article. Sure. Why Democrats are so downcast? This is a man named Seth Maskett. He is the author of Learning from Loss. And uh, basically, he has two reasons why Democrats are not cheering in the streets. Uh, One is there's a perception that we underperformed in 2020. Mm -hmm. It is tempting to think as you're as you're working for uh, defeating Trump to think that possibly this might be a repeat of 2018. Right. That this would be a Democratic landslide and we would gain another 15 seats in the House. And the pollsters told us that. It, that that was how things were going to go. And general elections are never like midterms, ever, ever, ever. It's right. a completely different turnout. It's a completely different attention span that peop- the kind of people that turn out are different. Uh, and um, y- if you're the kind of person who turns out for every election, it's it's hard to keep that perspective because, you know, I vote in midterms. I vote in regular elections. It doesn't matter. You vote. But that's not true of a large part of the population. And so thinking it might be 2018 again meant we were disappointed. But uh, Bill Schur had an article this week. Our friend of the friend, pod. Former friend of the pod. Friend, friend of the pod. And I think he's got a new podcast coming out. He said something about that on Twitter, mm-hmm. uh, which is exciting. And he ran the numbers on the House races in particular and found that Democrats – you know, p- there's a big fight now between – Democrats who, uh, you know, won their House seats by going full Medicare for all. And most of them are on the coast in very safe blue districts and so forth. And those that are not in safe blue districts saying, oh, but you said defund the police and that helped me lose, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, The Democrats that lost their House seats this year, many of them were in Republican districts. Yes. And they had won in 2018 because 2018 was a huge wave election. The House of Representatives had just voted to end health care for lots and lots of people. And it was John McCain's thumb that prevented Obamacare from being repealed. Right. That set Democratic electorates on fire. 
that was a fresh wound that everyone right. was was the feeling. The beer party in the Rose Garden was a very fresh wound, and it is a lot of it is a reason why a lot of women decided to run that year. Right, Democratic women. Uh, and Bill Sure said, "Don't beat yourself up about losing in an R plus five district in a general election with Donald Trump on the ballot. That's not." something to be devastated about. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other thing is to remember the quality of the two parties. The Republican Party didn't have a platform this year. No. Donald Trump doesn't give a shit about policy. He wants to win. He wants to make liberals cry. And that is his appeal to the Republican base. And you know that Democrats don't give a shit about policy either. We just want to own the conservatives. And no, that's not no? true. No, that's not true? Oh, <laughs> not that's true. right. No, we would like <laughs> health care for everyone and clean water and clean air for everyone and so on and so forth. And we we have all have different priorities. That's the thing. Like Green New Deal is a huge priority for a large number of the progressive wing of the party. Mm-hmm. Uh, health care, student loan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have to check in every day with a website called Common Dreams, which is a very pro-Bernie website. Right. And uh, we cross-post at Crooks and Liars. We cross-post some of the things that they write. This week, every article has been, progressives insist Biden do this. Right. (laughs) And every article is different. Progressives insist Biden go big on Green New Deal. I just take a shortcut and go to the uh, website called Progressives Insist, which is... (laughs) Just so much <laughs> you know, easier. It's like it's a curating site. You make site. a huge amount of money if you. Yeah, but but that is what the Democratic Party is made up of. It's Does. made That's up of do. activists who yeah. want things to happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've got the student loan as a huge, you know, providing relief on student loans is a huge issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, finding a way to cover more people on health care is a huge issue. And people are very passionate about that in the Democratic Party. That's not uh, abandoning the Democratic Party and saying, I'm going to walk out if I don't get my way. It's no. fighting for what you want. Yes. And it's a sign of a healthy party that that's happening. Yes, it that, is. It's hard to see that sometimes. It's easy to get upset about it. I keep telling you and you keep telling me, uh, you know, Biden isn't president yet. Right. <laughs> Not president yet. Really? <laughs> Not president Why yet. Why can't he be president tomorrow? Because he, well, because, yeah, and this is, I made a little joke today with my wife, which was because mm-hmm. he didn't get Obama's Green Lantern powers, which mm-hmm. were, oh. if I just will <laughs> yes. something hard enough, you know, let's, let's, one quick history lesson. Pretty much every major leap forward from the, um, from the New Deal, uh, Roosevelt stuff to LBJ's uh, Great Society. Mm-hmm. Um, we're all accomplished with overwhelming, unbeatable Democratic super majorities in the House and the House Senate, and the Senate, and an agenda that that could roll right through. You right. just crank the bills through, and he'll sign it. Boom, 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 boom. That has not that has never happened in my lifetime. Yep. It, 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 well, I I was alive when Johnson was president. Technically, I I didn't follow politics much when you I were was four. three, four. <laughs> yes, but I, right. I you know it was happening. But in my adult lifetime, that has never been true, ever. Yep. And so you end up with these maddening compromises. Um, second thing, which I know I've talked to you about, is my ex. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The charming and delightful person, but was very much a food hunger activist. Mm-hmm. And George H.W. Bush and Reagan, because it was 12 years of one set of policies, mm-hmm. you know, just decimated programs that she cared deeply about Mm -hmm. those sons of bitches and then bill clinton came in and restored 70 percent of what they had lost 75 percent because that's as far as he could go with his why not 135 percent that that loser and and she (laughs) and all of her activist Mm -hmm. friends hated him more than george hw bush how he dare was our friends to, stab us in the front? Yeah, like, right, no, right. I, I want 150 percent. It should be inc- well. I don't disagree, but what exactly do you think? You know, this is a party that we we didn't get a public option for health care because Joe Lieberman stabbed us in the fucking right. back. Right, and it was one vote. It was two votes. It was not. Barack and that Obama. was all the difference. It, and and the the reason that Obamacare passed at all mm-hmm. was because we had one senator in. Minnesota, right? Joe, you know Al Franken, Al Franken, 
after a recount and a recount and a recount, finally was was sworn in as the senator from Minnesota. Was seated just in time and to see. you had five minutes to get this passed right. under, you know, and that was it. Before Ted Kennedy passed away. Right. And the, right. This, whole, this whole kind of basic arithmetic of, of how a bill becomes a law is just utterly lost on activists. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, no, it should be. And I, it, it's like arguing in some cases with a very smart teenager. Well, <laughs> who, who, the you world, never do that, Driftland. No, I never. I, I know I can't win that argument. I'm just going to outlast them. I'll just wait until yeah. you become a bitter old person like me. Like it, I agree with you. The world should be this way. But, but you're shooting all over yourself. Yeah. Joe Biden is going to get 80 million votes. Mm-hmm. Every progressive who could be dragged out of their sickbed to vote voted for Joe Biden in this election. That is the number we have to work with. And there are 71 million assholes who looked at Donald Trump for four years and said, that's my guy. Right. And that's the and are crying we now, crying on Rush Limbaugh, the yeah. guy who's crying on Rush Limbaugh. From Georgia, uh-huh. angry at the Republican Party for not supporting Trump enough, mm-hmm. not supporting MAGA enough. And that brings me to the the other complaint about Biden, who's not president yet, by the not way. Not president yet. And that somehow he is, Biden is unwilling to prosecute Trump right now. Right now. He should be prosecuting um, right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, let's remember the debate with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in 2016, where Donald Trump looked at Hillary Clinton and said, you should be in jail. Yep. And even the mainstream media pundits were like, uh, we're not a banana republic. You don't go prosecute your political opponents personally Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. throw them in jail. You don't throw the person that ran against you in jail. This isn't Putin's Russia. This isn't some South American dictatorship. Mm Mm-hmm. The person that wins an election doesn't throw the other one in jail. This isn't Alabama, for God's sakes. Yeah. Even though it's Trump. Right. And we understand that Trump has committed massive crimes yes. and must be prosecuted. And we yes. get it. Biden isn't the one to do that, folks. If if Biden comes in and somehow declares that Donald Trump is guilty and throws him in jail, that's a banana republic. Right. We are a nation of laws. And so for, and, and the other thing, guys, 90% of this is political messaging for Georgia right Right. now. Right. The, the 2020 election isn't over yet. I mean, I, it's hard to take that in, but it's true. Joe Biden has zero region reasons, zero reasons to enrage Trump voters in Georgia right now. No, no, the exact opposite. He has every reason to let Donald Trump tell Lay the low. base, <laughs> yes. tell the base that no elections are fixed. There's no point in voting. Everything's fucked. It's all you know. Uh, the might Republican as well just stay Senate home. has abandoned me. Right, right. And to force Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue to go full MAGA and alienate any never Trumper or people who are just tired and want the election over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they those two are in a real rock and a hard place situation because mm-hmm. they have to make generic voters happy with them it's incredibly close it was incredible so close that there's a runoff with both right. of them right already and the democratic party knows what's at stake here mm-hmm. and democratic voters know what's at stake here with the senate we've been hungry for it for a long time yes we have and so the idea that kelly loffler and david Perdue have to run with with no donald trump on the ballot and he doesn't give a shit about you no He's busy. He's busy with Rudy Giuliani mm-hmm. uh, and and MAGA as that phone caller to, to uh, Rush Limbaugh this morning crying on the phone about Republican lawmakers don't support crying. Trump or MAGA. Crying. You know, crying. I'll die for Donald Trump. Uh, yes. He said. Mm-hmm. And how dare not one Republican senator or representative attend the Million MAGA March. Mm hmm. The 10,000 MAGA uh, March, yes. T- the, oh, he said there were 200,000 people there. He was crying about that, too. Yeah, the math you know, is the not... The crowd real... size, the mainstream media's fault, right? Math not, math not strong on that side. <laughs> <laughs> so even with Trump, uh, number one, this is not Joe Biden's job. And, and for, fortunately, we have some very good 
state AGs who yes. have been on Donald Trump's ass from the beginning uh-huh. uh, going after him. And uh, he's giving uh, the Michigan AG a whole bunch of reasons to prosecute him for election interference. Yeah, which is a felony. Uh, in addition to that. Yeah. So um, it's really important to recognize that that's Trump's banana republic nonsense. And it's very tempting with Trump to think, no, we've really got to lock him up and to want that. But, uh, you know, that's not Biden's job. Let the state AGs do that. If Let the, the Justice Department independently from Biden do that. Mm-hmm. And we'll get there. Um, but the temptation is to make Biden the center of everything. And there are just some things that are not the president's job. And, now, and, you wanted to talk about the Flight 967 election. Well, yeah. That's, <laughs> what is that's that? My own, that's my own coinage. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, because uh-huh. here's what we can all agree on. Here's what we can all agree on. We want this shit to be over. Mm-hmm. This is just intolerable. This is a four-year nightmare. For mm-hmm. some of us, this is a 30-year, 40-year yeah. nightmare. Watching the, the rough bee slouching towards D.C., getting closer and closer, taking more and more of, a, of our country down the pipes with it until it finally arrived in the White House and then seeing how many tens of millions of our fellow citizens think this is just great. This is just great. This is exactly what we want. Mm-hmm. Has been a nightmare. And it's time for the nightmare to be over. And and it is it is incredibly important and incredibly cruel to remind people, nope, that's not how this is going to work. This is mm-hmm. going to be a shitty 60 days it's going to be followed by a, a brief honeymoon period, like three hours, and then the Republican Party is going to regroup and do everything it can do to sabotage. They're sabotaging on their way out. The Trump administration is burning everything they can lay their hands on to make Joe Biden's job impossible. And then once Biden's here, they will all forget that Trump ever happened, and they and will go blame and- Biden for everything from day right. one in, in an so, effort to win it, win the midterms. Yep. And so the, the, I'm not sure if you all remember that there was this hysterical call for Donald Trump to be elected, even though he's a monster four years ago, because, and it was the flight 93 election. It was being peddled all over the right. It made, it was all over the right, like a rash. And it was, you know, flight 93 was when the passengers stormed the cockpit of a hijacked plane, because although we might die, if we do it, we'll definitely die. If we don't, the Hillary Clinton will destroy America. Democracy will be a smoking hole in the ground. There'll be nothing left for anyone, a, a complete wasteland if Hillary Clinton is, is elected president. So however awful and shitty and, and monstrous Donald Trump is, at least he's not Hillary Clinton. And mm-hmm. we must seize the cockpit and, and, and maybe we'll survive. Who knows? That was how your Republican friends and neighbors and relatives and business owners were thinking four years ago because they're out of their fucking minds. Because they have fallen down a rat hole from which there is no escape. So this <laughs> this has been the flight nine six seven election, and that's because on January fifteenth, a flight from Los Angeles to Chicago O'Hare, a drunk passenger caused the flight to divert to Albuquerque. He began knocking seats and assaulting flight attendants and, and taking off his clothes, which I think I've mentioned already on this podcast. It is <laughs> a giant asshole ruining it for everyone else and wrecking the flight and they had to put the plane down it delayed everything that's we're having a tantrum the -hmm. man in the white house is throwing an extended hysterical fright driven narcissism driven tantrum and and the silence from his party is staggering so it's it's not we're not going to crash the plane this isn't the end of history it is one asshole among the passengers who's making life fucking unbearable for everyone else. And we need to land the plane, drag his ass off, and then resume the flight. And it's going to be rough and bad enough as it is. But that's yep. that's where we stand right now with this country. And it's a big inconvenience to anyone that needs a good solid night's sleep. It is. <laughs> Absolutely. It really is. Um, I did mention also in our notes that um, you and I are cursed with the liberal superpower of memory. And that's that's our, uh, you know, political university for this week yes. is it is fair remembering stuff. It is. Yeah. And it is your duty and responsibility to remember yeah. things and remember. Mm-hmm. And although it is a painful thing to do, 
it's important to cast your mind back, back to 2016. Um, because all of the usual suspects in 2016 were positioning themselves for the inevitable Trump loss. Yeah. Which everyone knew was going to happen. So that's why never Trumpers exist at all. They didn't, they didn't come into being out of principle. They weren't Hillary supporters. They were up until the last minute. They were throwing everybody. They were throwing David French into the mix going, look, here's some asshole. Let's vote for him. Um, <laughs> these are people who, who, you know, who were running Ted Cruz's campaign, who were running Marco Rubio's campaign, uh, lifelong rock ribbed asshole Republicans. They didn't become never Trumpers out of the goodness of their hearts. They became never Trumpers because they made a bet that Trump was going to lose the Republic and take the GOP down with them. And they could step in and say, Oh, we're the answer to your problem. We're the answer yeah. to your prayers. And that, since that never happened, they found themselves out in the cold and they needed a place to crash. And they've been crashing on the liberal couch for four years. So everything that went on from punishing Hillary Clinton to, to saying that, you know, emails is the same as rape. Emails is the same as Russian interference. E emails is the same as everything because both sides are terrible and both sides, the corrupt duopoly is ruining America and we need to disrupt the system. Remember how every fucking pundit was saying that. So everyone is positioning themselves in 2016 to be ready for when Trump loses. And they can, they can, they can posture how tough they were and how tough they were on Hillary. And you can t trust me as a journalist because I was tough on everybody. But that never happened. And so everyone's bets were called <laughs> and they were suddenly out in the cold because they all of the shit they've been preaching has now come back to haunt them because this is disruption congratulations matthew dowd you got what you wished for for christmas you got disruption and the never trumpers got a free ride on the liberal dollar to a second career which is you know good for them but what's happening now is exactly the same thing this is the the, the incredible silence on the part of the overwhelming majority of elected Republican officials is exactly like in 2016, Jaffa, Jason Chaffetz saying that he supports, but not his door style Trump. Yeah. It's that, whatever. It's that I don't want to, I don't, it's splunge all over again and yep. look it up. That's, that's a great Monty Python word, um, which means I'm not a yes man, but I agree with what you say, but I'm being decisive, but I'm really not. And don't hurt me, please. Yeah. And so you have a whole bunch of Republicans. And, and then I'm going to quit. Yeah. And go work well, for Fox. Yeah. So yeah. you have a, a few windsock Republicans like like Flake and Romney who are speaking up and doing absolutely nothing. They're, they're saying a lot of brave things. You know what? If, if Flake and Romney and Collins and a few others caucused with the Democrats, this would be over tomorrow. Right. Over tomorrow. They are fucking cowards. They are quislings because they're Republicans. The Republicans are all terrible people. So I don't give a shit that Jeff Flake says a few brave things, but Mitt Romney stands up every now and then and shows that he can at least simulate a spine for an hour at a time. Well, and all the former Trump officials that are saying that and mm -hmm. all of the former senators that are saying that, oh, yeah. members, members of the House who are no longer there. Yeah. John Boehner's press secretary is on all in saying, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. You yeah. know, it wasn't crazy when, when Boehner was shouting hell no to health care. Yeah. On the floor of the house. Well, and you have yeah. uh, on Twitter today. Again, I can I can watch through the window. I can't participate, but <laughs> um, um, Stuart Stevens complimenting Rick Tyler for saying, "Oh bad yeah, things. Like, sure." No, Rick Tyler, who's all over my MSNBC, and all these people who have no memory of anything that Rick Tyler did before 2017. I mean, he seems like a really great guy, really reasonable guy. He says a lot of brave stuff. Like, yeah, before that, he was Ted Cruz's campaign manager yep he got he fired Cruz's campaign manager. he got fired yeah. from the cruise campaign for lying about the opposition's religion he, <sighs> he's a republican mercenary he's not a nice guy i don't care what Stuart stevens says he's not a nice guy but he looks nice as long as you don't look past 2017 so all of this has happened before i hate to go all battlestar galactica and all of it will happen again um every pundit is now suddenly real brave you know, Chuck Todd yeah. has found his balls for five minutes. So like, you know what? Uh, this is crazy nonsense. This is a bunch of bullshit. And I think Donald Trump is doing the irreparable damage to democracy. Yeah, well, you know what? Here's the thing you should do. Go back in time and don't put all of the reprobates and scumbags who made him possible on television forever and give him the free platform. How about that? But now that it looks like Trump is going to lose and lose badly and be dragged out of the White House kicking and screaming. He has lost badly. Yes. Yes. But now that it looks like he will be officially, certifiably in the House of Representatives, electors and all lost, um, everyone suddenly got real brave. 
Yeah. You know, pundits got real brave all of a sudden. There's a, all the all the former people who aren't running for office suddenly are just full of full of vigor. And they're all agreeing that, you know, what what Joe Biden has to do is reach out to Republicans because, you know, we got to we got to work across the aisle now. And it's the same as 2016. Mm -hmm. All of the cowards are being quiet and, and not and straddling as many fences as they can find because they don't know what the future holds. All they know is it might be that they still need these 70 million fascists to stay in power. And talking shit about Donald Trump is not going to give them a ticket back to the House or the Senate. But talking about a guy who's about to go up in flames um, bravely uh, is not a sure bet either. So yeah. best to just sit down on my hands, do what the Senate's doing now. Hold hearings on hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> you know, hold hearings on completely irrelevant, crazy shit. Because Ron Johnson wants to and ignore the actual fact that there are hundreds of bills that could pass right now that are sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk, including relief right. bills that they won't do because they want to sabotage the Biden presidency. And they want to protect corporations from any liability, oh, yeah, that's, including that's, Fox News, by the way, any liability for COVID spread in their places of business or in the case of Fox News literally spreading COVID disinformation. Yes. And spreading COVID in the white house, by the way, is now yeah. is a hot spot again, but that's hot spot again. Yeah. Um, uh, you want to talk about Charlie Sykes and the Heartland Institute I briefly? I'll talk about it very briefly. And we have bets in our house, which, which bulwark member, which never Trumper, which Lincoln project person is going to be on my liberal network tonight on which show. And we almost mm -hmm. always get it right. So, this week, I'm listening to any broadcast. I'm listening to the Bulwark podcast. And the subject of the Heartland Institute comes up. And it cracked me up. Because the Heartland Institute is in Chicago. They're a quote-unquote libertarian think tank that was funded by uh, big oil. I'm sorry, big tobacco money until that money ran out because tobacco is freedom. And then they quickly pivoted to a uh, coal, oil, and gas, because coal is freedom. And that's been their sort of, that's where they get their money from. They get their money from polluters and poisoners who want uh, not to talk about the environment or public health, but to talk about freedom and liberty. And that's why they're libertarians. This is, by the way, the whelping box that created Ben Dominich. This is where he got his start. This is where he cut his teeth. So I'm listening to Charlie Sykes talk about this organization. You might have heard of them, the Heartland Institute. I think they're in Chicago. Um, he pretty much knows nothing about them at all, uh, except, you know, he gets their uh, quote unquote weirdo newsletter. He and his guests just have a, a high old time laughing about this crackpot libertarian. They used to be a little more mainstream, maybe, but I don't really know what they do. And those of us with long memories uh, might remember that Charlie Sykes used to be the Rush Limbaugh of Wisconsin. And Charlie Sykes back in 2012 was promoting a book. Uh, called A Nation of Moochers. Guess what that book was about? And Charlie Sykes was invited by his good friend John Bast, I'm sorry, Joe Bast, uh, to a book reading, to a book party, a book launch party at a place called the Heartland Institute in <laughs> Chicago. And there's a fucking 50-minute video out there on YouTube of Charlie Sykes thanking his good friend Joe Bast, who is the CEO of of the Heartland Institute and the first person who ever worked there has been there like 20 years as an institution himself, welcoming his good friend, Charlie Sykes. And for an hour, it's just Charlie Sykes answering questions about uh, his book and how wonderful his book is and going on and on about welfare and going on and on about, you know, how, how these, uh, these people call us racists and that's just a bunch of stuff. There's no accountability. There's nobody listening. To well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why is Charlie Sykes lying about not knowing an outfit that threw him a book party that welcome, yeah. that he clearly knows. Well, it, because it's embarrassing, Blue Gal. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's embarrassing for him to admit that before 2016, he was this totally other person. Because once you start opening that door, all sorts of shit falls out. And that's why right. across the board, there is a, there is a, 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 to quote Winston Churchill, an iron curtain being dropped across the year 2016. And before that, you were simply not allowed to talk about what your favorite people on TV were doing. And I think that's incredibly dangerous and incredibly dumb because it allows for the worst people in the world to get away with all kinds of shit. And it also deprives us of learning anything from the past. 
Right. Because if you then don't, then that's the point of our university. Exactly. Thing, is you've got to learn from the past. And if you start pretending that all of this shit happened spontaneously for no explicable reason in 2016, as opposed to this all began with Reagan and Nixon's mm-hmm. Southern strategy and and Gingrich and Limbaugh back when Limbaugh was syndicated a quarter of a century ago. You're depriving yourself of the ability to learn from history. People who are asking for your trust are telling you, do not look in the basement. If you look in the basement, I'll block you on Twitter. I'll call you mm-hmm. stupid. I'll cut mm-hmm. you off completely. Well, what's in the basement then? Well, in the basement is the education that comes from learning how exactly we got into this situation and the people who brought us in. Now, Stuart Stevens is a pretty good one among them. He's willing to say, I mean, the title of his book is it was all a lie. Mm-hmm. And as I've said before, that must make for a very lively staff meeting over at the Bulwark. <laughs> because all the rest of them are like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. This all started in 2016. Before that, there was no nothing. No one knows what happened. There was St. Reagan way back there somewhere, and that's all we know. And it's incredibly dangerous to let people get away with telling you that you shouldn't learn from the past. There's nothing back there you should worry about that let's just keep looking. Let's look forward, not backwards. Let's not learn from anything. Let's not, let's not question what some, was on somebody's resume before five minutes ago. And that's just people who say that are are lying to you for some reason. And it's always a bad reason. And we should at least learn not to trust people who tell us that we shouldn't look into their past. A source close to Donald Trump says Trump told an ally that he knows he lost, but he is delaying the transition process and is trying to sow doubt about the election results in order to get back at Democrats for questioning the legitimacy of his election in 2016. Mm hmm. And Edward Norton on Twitter today was trending for a poker analogy that I think is right on. Part of it said Trump's contemptible, treasonous, seditious assault on the stability of our political compact isn't about 2024, personal enrichment or anything else other than trying to use chaos and threat to the foundation of the system as a leverage to trade for a safe exit. Mm -hmm. Call his bluff. We can't flinch. Uh, and, and I think that's true. I think he's looking for a par- a way to pardon himself and come off scot-free so that he can, uh, you know, have rallies for the next four years and criticize Biden and be a legitimate former president. Well, that's a lot of insight from uh, Ralph Cramden's former sidekick on The Honeymooters. So yeah. <laughs> Very impressed Not that, that Edward Norton. Oh, it's a different – it's, it's an actor. It's a different a, Edward Norton. An actor gentleman who was played the Hulk, I believe, yeah. at one point in time. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, let's let's um, just remember the past, folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are trying to run the uh, Bush v. Gore playbook, but they have none of the cards that the Bush v. Gore playbook had. Yeah. Of being a single state, of being a very close selection, of being down to one state only. Um well, and, having, uh, of having their of having George Bush's cousin on Fox News call uh, it for him early. Right. Um, and having his brother as governor of the state that yeah. was in question. And his campaign uh, chairman as the secretary of state in, charging, uh, in charge of counting the votes. And let's be clear, and having Joe Lieberman around to say, you know what, let's uh, let's not count military votes. Yeah. You know, like what? No, no, you know, we, just to be completely fair, let's let's just stab Al Gore in the back while he's not looking because that's yeah. just fuck what Joe Lieberman, the Lieberman family just does that. That's yeah. that's their brand. So and it's not in one county or one state. It's across the country, and there's no it's way. It's six states, and it's yep. it's and he and he has completely incompetent people. I mean, that was the other thing that George W. Bush did have was competent lawyers with real lawsuits trying to stop counting from happening. I remember but um, the, the uh, thing that is the same mm-hmm. is the delegitimizing of black Democrats. Yes, that racism is constant all the way through. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's always- do a. A news roundup, Drift Glass. I, I was just going to say, I remember um, Hunter Thompson saying that he, when he saw Jim Baker, mm-hmm. um, it, it was like uh, standing with the bushes. It was like, I think, a, like a family of hyenas with like a lamb in its mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, they're mm-hmm. just going to destroy this. They're going to win because they're, they're, gonna they're win. that yeah. ruthless. They're that willing to, to, to yep. make it a street fight and, and burn democracy down if they don't get their way, which they were perfectly willing well, to do. And all they've got now is Rudy Giuliani and in in the background being very quiet and very invisible, Roger Stone. Yeah. And Roger Stone can't do a uh, stop the count. They tried 
they tried, but they they had too many states. And when you have so many states at at risk, and you're saying stop the count in one and continue the count in another, uh, it's hard to take you seriously. Yeah. Well, and again, uh, this works for the 70 million meatheads who you know believe oh, anything. The we whole said. this whole exercise is for Pete. We said this yesterday on Twitter. This whole the crazy uh, press conference yeah. was for people who believe that Gateway Pundit is a news source. Yeah. And we have people like that in our neighborhood. I yeah. mean, you know, you go on local Facebook just to talk to radio personalities or whatnot. And there's it's full of people who are screaming at him for not following the news. The you news. know, I mean, on, on Onan and Gateway yeah. Pundit. And, you know, I try to listen to both sides. But the greatest scandal in human history has taken place right now. And you as a journalist won't follow it. And I kind of pity people in, in media here because they're where I was. 30 years ago Mm -hmm, they're like mm -hmm. they keep trying to reason with people who are clearly have have nothing in their brains but but sean hannity dog shit and there's no reasoning with them and and these very well-intentioned people locally keep trying to say well maybe for nice and we hold out a lot of branch like no 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 learn from my lesson learn from the charred stumps i pulled back every time we offered an olive branch of them cut them off Stop talking to them. Stop engaging with them in any way because they're bad people. They live in a shithole um, of their own imagination. They only listen to Rush Limbaugh. They're going to end up crying on a Rush Limbaugh show one day or one day soon, and they're lost to reason. So stop it. Um, and speaking of which, this morning, Donald Trump was on Twitter retweeting a minor MAGA psycho named Wayne Dupree, who called on Trump supporters to quote fight a civil war to quote take out the garbage that would be you yeah that's good out. that's good rhetoric right there and he yeah. didn't get he didn't get put in twitter jail well, for he, it, he didn't did say he? white trash or gimp so you know there you go <laughs> didn't call the trump administration war. claims claims they will auction off oil and gas drilling rights in the arctic national wildlife refuge in alaska before biden takes office yeah i think a lawsuit is in is in order for that one don't uh, you a, that? i just there's a it, there's going to be a lot of work for lawyers after yep. uh, after January 20th. Um, there after, always is. After Kelly McEnany claimed that Donald Trump was never allowed a proper transition, people, helpful people all over the Internet, immediately started posting the part of Donald Trump's 2017 inauguration address saying that he was grateful to the Obamas for the gracious aid throughout the transition. So... Christopher Krebs, the nation's top election security official, was fired after his agency, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, released a statement calling the 2020 election the most secure in American history. And it's important to keep the markets stable. So White House White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows said that he can't guarantee that lawmakers will reach a deal to avert a mid-December government shutdown. Government shutdown. Yep. A reminder, nine months ago... After Trump was impeached but not removed, Susan Collins said, I believe the president has learned from this case. Susan Collins was just reelected to her Senate seat by a comfortable margin. Uh Uh-huh. Steve Mnuchin's uh, burn it down uh, on the way out strategy at the Fed was being likened to stripping the Titanic of its lifeboats. By asking the Fed to return unused Treasury capital, Mnuchin is effectively preventing the Biden administration from being able to use or revamp the central bank loan backstops that were made possible by the Bipartisan CARES Act passed in March. So there really is a, 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 an orchestrated strategy to sabotage everything, to mine everything, to blow up France as you're being driven out of it. Stupid coup news. Trump's targets Michigan in his ploy to subvert the election. In a brazen step, the president invited Republican state leaders from Michigan to the White House. That's illegal. As he and his allies try to prevent the state from certifying Joe Biden's clear victory there, Donald Trump's legal team, which, by the way, all has COVID now or has been exposed to COVID, uh, trying to prove voter fraud in Michigan apparently used data taken from counties in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, In COVID news... Guess which one of these is true? A, Tyson food managers ordering line workers to get back to work immediately. Or B, Tyson food managers forming an office betting pool on how many workers would get COVID-19. Both of those are true. They're both true because some sick fucks run Tyson food. Chuck Grassley has tested positive for COVID. Uh, Rudy Giuliani's son, who is a White House staffer, by the way, uh, just tested positive for coronavirus as well. And he he has been holed up with Rudy in a very uh, 
small office at the RNC doing strategy stuff. Well, and I think Hal Sparks said we need to study Rudy Giuliani's blood to figure out why he's immune to this stuff. Mm-hmm. And A, it's leaking out of his head. And B, yeah. he quotes <laughs> Game of Thrones, what is dead may never die. <laughs> More than 743,000 workers filed new unemployment claims, an increase of 31,000 from the previous week, an additional 320,000 claims, 320,000 claims were processed for pandemic unemployment assistance, the program for gig and self-employed workers. Roughly 20.3 million people are claiming some form of unemployment insurance. About 12 million Americans are scheduled to lose their jobless benefits the day after Christmas unless Congress passes another relief bill. And the CDC has warned Americans against traveling for Thanksgiving. Uh, there was a Twitter thread the other day about mm-hmm. have whatever food you want for Thanksgiving. Right. And I really like that idea. Just, I do too. You want pizza? Have pizza. Eat All right. Like. Do what you like and do it however you like. Do it on Zoom. Yeah. But- and don't invite 20 people over to your house. No. Uh More than 3 million people in the United States, about 1% of the population, have active coronavirus infections and are potentially contagious. Uh, Donald Trump has not attended a single coronavirus task force meeting in in at least the last five months. He's been golfing plenty of times, though. Yeah, leadership. Trump's coronavirus advisor called for Michiganders to rise up against Governor Gretchen Whitmer's new COVID-19 restrictions. After Whitmer announced Sunday a three-week pause in indoor dining, Dr. Scott Atlas was just a complete asshole. Mm -hmm. And we now have more details about what those uh, armed people who wanted to kidnap Governor Whitmer had in store. There was a fantasy of, uh, you know, setting fire to the state house and and burning it to the ground and also having uh, televised executions of uh, Michigander officials. Yeah. Uh, and in stupid coup and COVID crossover news, uh, Rudy, Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani and other key members of Trump's outside legal team won't be attending today's meeting with two Michigan lawmakers because they've been exposed to the coronavirus. I'm telling you, if, if I had any invitation to the White House and I was a Republican, I wouldn't go. It's a hot spot. Yeah. Why would you go? Why would you go? In local news, COVID-19 is now the third leading cause of death in Illinois right now. Right now. Uh, And area Trump voter interview venues have been shut down due to being stupid. Um, At least four local restaurants, five actually, but one got their license back, have been shut down because they would not listen to basic public health guidelines and keep their doors shut and not see people. So now they've had their license lifted. Yeah, it's not about not selling food. They're allowed to sell for takeout right. and do curbside delivery and, and package food for gut to go and so forth. But they just insist on having indoor dining. Mm-hmm. And, and one uh, of those locations, DJ Cafe, you might remember from this podcast, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, because it's the place that was temporarily shut down because one of the owners could not keep his racist pie holes shut on Facebook. Yeah, we had to go about off and Black talk. Lives Matter. George <laughs> Floyd and Black Lives Matter couldn't. Could these are? I tell you, now that Ezra Klein is going to the New York Times, <laughs> please, if you Nobody know him, cares Drift Glass. <laughs> if you, no, no, if you know him, slip him a note. Tell him to tell the people of the New York Times that if they really want to know what Trump voters are thinking. I will tell them. On the phone. They don't have to them. risk COVID. You don't even Just... come out here. I'll tell you exactly what's on the menu at D&J Cafe. I will name names. I'll tell you all about shit that, that you know, off the record, of course. Um, <laughs> but I can, any liberal who lives in a red state or red area can tell you all about Trump voters. All the blue dots in the red state can tell you. Yes. Mm-hmm. So just saying, as long as, if you know Ezra, Slip him a note. Let him know I can be his <laughs> inside man because he's in he's he's in Oakland, California, and so all I am to them is flyover country. But I can tell you what it's like and why it is. It was inevitable that the racist shithole diner that got shut down for being a racist shithole diner was, of course, one of the diners that got shut down because they wouldn't follow public health guidelines. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Buddy. And Buddy says, no, it is you that is upside down. Mm -hmm. Not me. I'm not Mm -hmm. upside down. You're upside down. Nope. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, 
your pet will sit on the kitchen floor right side up or upside down and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Buddy at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. And by the way, I'm doing postcards to voters uh, for Georgia vote by mail. So Mm -hmm. we're getting the word out again and Mm -hmm. it's going very well. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love, and we appreciate you paying our salary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, to be honest, the Internet Kitties are a little bit jealous of the state of Georgia. After all, Biden only won Illinois once, but now he has won Georgia two times. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.